Hello folks and welcome to your next fun packed episode. Today what I want to talk about is the latest project uh, that I've been reverse engineering and that is the Toyota Prius Gen 3 inverter converter. In fact the camera is literally sitting on top of it as I am filming this. Now before I get into any of the technical details on it um, I did a few live streams uh, showing the process re re really of what I was of what I was doing in a more general way. Uh, so if you want to be completely bored out of your skulls, go look at those live streams. Now, what I said I'd do then is make a little video just going through the just going through the kind of top level stuff. So first off, why? Well. One of the things that struck me when I took on the thousand euro EV uh, build pro project was uh, the amount of feedback that I started to receive, the amount of people that were engaging with, with, with that particular build. And I got much more engagement on that build than any of the other ones that I've done, even the kind of fancy Tesla stuff. So what the natural kind of a thought process for me then became, well, could we do some kind of a AC system and or what components are readily available? And the Toyota Prius stuff kind of jumped out as being the most readily available in terms of transaxles, power electronics, all that type of thing. So I went on eBay and I spent a few hundred bucks and I got myself a few inverter converters. Now the Gen 3 inverter converter jumped out as being kind of the best compromise between cost and functionality. And so I've been concentrating on that um, for the last week or two just to have a look and see what would be in, what involved in uh, making it work for us instead of Toyota and also for it to do things that we needed to do versus what they needed to do. So uh, let's have a little bit of a closer look at what I've got on the bench here. I'll talk you guys through some of my thought processes and um, you know by all means you know, give me a comment here, let, let me know what you think, because uh, I'm really doing this, like any of the stuff I do will be completely open source, but I'm doing this more to see um, what I can, you know, maybe uh, free up some of this cheap and easy to get uh, inverters and power electronics. So, all right, let's go have a quick look. So what I got here is I have the Gen 3 inverter converter with the top cover removed and also the bottom cover removed. Now what I've done here in order to power the thing up is I have taken the capacitor out of the lid because this cap is normally bolted into the lid. Um, so I've just sat this back on and it's just basically being held on by the electrical connections here now uh, so I could do some further testing on it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the capacitor off so we can have a bit of a closer look in at the guts here and I'll show you what I've been doing and where we're hoping to go with this. All right. So I just pulled off the capacitor here and this isn't one but this is actually three high quality Panasonic film capacitors. Now, so inside uh, we've got the works. Now, without going into too much of the technical detail, what we've got is the control board. We've got the IGBT driver board, which is this big long board that kind of goes on full length. 
We've got this custom IGBT block and then underneath, if we tip it up, we have the DC to DC converter on the right and the uh, booster converter on the left. Now I call it a booster converter, but yes, it can book and boost, I know that. So, this is what you can get right now on eBay for, I think I paid 160 euros delivered for this. So, problem is, of course, that this is controlled by this board, which we have no idea re really how this board works. And even if we did, it's not going to do uh, what we need it to do. So what I've done is I have been reverse engineering uh, the signals that travel from this logic board down this cable to the IGBT driver board. Now the first thing that we're, we're going to see here is that this connector header is a very very fine pitch part uh, to which this plug mates. If we were to have any hope of designing our own version of this board we needed to source this guy. Fortunately after quite a bit of poking about I managed to do just that from a company in Japan and the less said about the uh, ordering process and customs clearance of these little plastic components uh, the better because that gives me uh, heartburn but anyway we got them so obviously the plan then is to design our own version of this PCB so I've been poking away into the various uh, signals there um, I won't go into too much detail on this it's all pretty generic reverse engineering stuff and I you know I kind of did it in the live streams if you want to skip through them by all means do that um, and so we're going to design our own control board for the Gen 3 Prius inverter that will run not only the two inverters uh, but will run the DC DC converter and the book boost converter here as, as well so that is what we're going to do we're going to have our own open source version of this card that we can pop in there and plug it in as if it were you know the original part okay slight comedy interlude my chair just fell apart joyous now since I kind of made a few videos about that I was messing about with pre with Prius stuff uh, I've had a couple of, well I've had a lot of qu qu questions, but I've also had uh, a good few negative comments, so I want to just address a few of these things now. Um, personally, I believe that the point of an EV conversion for me has been about saving money. Um, and the days of being able to charge people 20 or 30 grand to convert a car, unless it's a very specific car, a classic or something like that, are gone. So, we kind of need to evolve, and if we intend to do that, then we need to have cheaper parts av available and more plentiful. So I'm having a go at this. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try. Now, next uh, thing is that within the Toyota hybrid system, neither the motors nor the inverter conver converters work very hard at all. So I don't know 
what the limits are until we physically get in there and start running them and run them I will uh, but what I do know is is that I'm not going to not do this because somebody tells me it's a bad idea so uh -uh, ain't gonna happen now so as I said plan is to design a logic board to fit into this guy but before we do that, I'm in this case taking a slightly intermediate step because there's some weird signals in there. There's basically a 50 pin connector and I've identified all but two signals on it. But the signals themselves uh, can be a little bit strange. So rather than go straight into a logic board, what I decided to do uh, was to design a little... it's going to be a little breakout board and the purpose of this is to give me a decent sized PCB where I can put one of my little little 50 way connectors uh, and have lots of nice big chunky terminal blocks on there so I can connect stuff and do some more um, engineering and testing and all that type thing and figure out how these signals work before we commit to a full-on logic board design. Now, because this is a dual inverter and has the booster converter and the DC-DC converter in there, we're going to have two separate um, Hubner uh, type um, inverter logic sections. Probably have a little Arduino or something like that to run the uh, booster converter and the DC DC converter. Now, another thing that keeps popping up is the limitation of the booster. Yes, I know about the limitation of the booster converter. I can read. Um, we're not going to use it as the main pathway for getting uh, traction voltage into the inverter. Instead, what I think we can do is to use it as a battery charger, uh, of which it would make quite a good one. Um, so st stay tuned for some of that, because it could end badly. As I say, also then we've got a fully functional DC to DC converter in there. So all of this in a very compact and nicely engineered package is available for for very cheap but as the saying goes it gets it gets better let's go for a walk now right out here we have got another inverter converter that looks quite similar doesn't it? Well, uh, this one I picked up at my local breaker's yard uh, about a week ago for the princely sum of 50 euros. And this guy is from a Toyota Aorus. Now, no idea if it's the same internals, but it looks the same. Logic board looks the same. It's got the same connector on there. Um, I'll crack open the bottom part of the case and see what's going on in there. But, yeah, 50 bucks, guys, right? I mean, Prius Transaxle that I've done the mod on here, uh, 150 bucks. So, I mean, we're looking down the road of a permanent magnet AC traction system sitting on the you know sitting in the shed here for 200 bucks okay this is liquid cooled igbt drivers the whole lot dc dc converter and another question that has cropped up is can we use this to control a dc motor and the answer to that is oh hell yes uh, I did actually demonstrate that with a Gen 2 inverter converter there uh, not so long ago. So, that's about the size of it, folks. That is what we are working on. 
and we will attempt to bring you you guys uh, as much low cost um, stuff as I can possibly reverse engineer. Now, yes, I will be selling the boards, and yes, I will be making a profit. Yes, I will also sell the bare boards, and yes, God damn it, I will make a profit. But, big difference. You don't have to give me a cent. Because, link in the description to my GitHub page, where once this is done, and even in the intermediate stages, you can download all this stuff and go do it yourself. Hell, I've even posted that diagram on there so that's about all i've got for you guys today um don't forget to like share and subscribe or dislike unshare and unsubscribe and we will see you in the next video as i said links in the description to the github where you can download all of my stuff from tesla to prius to dc to chargers to whatever you want to do also there'll be links in the description to my patreon and paypal should you wish to financially support me because guess what the more money i i get the more of this stuff i can afford to do so that's it I'll leave you with that thought. And until then, happy Prius parts purchasing. <laughs>